Man, I sure am thirsty. If only I had an ancient Aztec drink to quench my thirst. Oh, hey! What's this? Ah, refreshing. Hi everybody, I'm super excited because we have a very special recipe today, but before we get into that, I have a little bit of background to share with you. So about two years ago, I went on a science research trip with my school down to Costa Rica to study leafcutter ants. It was very cool, I learned a lot, but I also had the privilege of staying at an organic cocoa farm while I was there. While we were there, they taught us a ton about the history of chocolate and how chocolate is made. But one of the things they also taught us how to make was an ancient Aztec drink that was made with cocoa. It's called Chocoatl. It is the ancient precursor to modern day hot chocolate. And it's a super unique and delicious drink that I thought I would share with you today. Luckily, while I was there, I also bought some of their cocoa so that I can use it in the recipe today. I'll be using what's known as cacao nibs, which is just the lightly crushed up cocoa bean. If you were to crush it up more, it would then become cocoa powder. So if you end up making this recipe today, you can substitute cocoa powder for the cacao nibs that I'm using. But I wanted to show you the more authentic drink. I'll put a link down in the description where you can check them out and maybe order some cacao nibs of your own. So let's get started. All right, so to start off, you're going to put a cup and a half of water into a blender. You're also going to add four tablespoons of the cacao nibs or to substitute that for cocoa powder along with two tablespoons of white sugar a splash of vanilla extract a little pinch of salt and about a teaspoon of red pepper flakes you can also use a bit of a jalapeno for this so you're going to put all of that in your blender and then blend that up for a couple of minutes try and make it as smooth as possible but if you're using the cacao nibs it won't get super smooth after we blend it we can take that out and place it in a cup now since this is traditionally made with a mortar and pestle, the texture is very grainy. So I'm going to try a different method to see if we can get rid of that grainy texture. And in order to do that, I'm going to put my cacao nibs in a coffee grinder first to try and grind those up a little bit to get rid of that texture. With the cocoa powder, you probably wouldn't have this problem. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did last time, put in the water, the cocoa, the sugar, the salt, the pepper flakes, and the little splash of vanilla. And then we're going to blend that up for a couple minutes as well. You can already tell with the second one that the color got much darker a lot quicker, and that means that the cocoa is going to combine with the drink quicker and will probably release more of its flavor. So now we can take that one off and pour it into a separate cup. Here's a side-by-side -side of the two. The one on the right is the one where I didn't pre-grind the cocoa, and the one on the left is where I did. You can see that when I ground the cocoa, it developed a little bit of a froth on top, and I think that's because some of the cocoa is allowing it to get aerated. And so you get a little bit of a chocolatey froth on top. And that's it, you've made Chocowaddle. Hey everyone, we're gonna do a little bit of a taste test to see which of the methods I prefer. So we're gonna start out with the one that I didn't grind up the cocoa first. Mm. The texture is definitely a bit more grainy and I would expect that because I didn't grind up the cocoa. But I think that the, the sugar and the other flavors come through a bit more. I can definitely taste the, the spiciness from the peppers and a little bit of the vanilla and the sweetness from the sugar. So overall, I really like it, although the texture might be a little off-putting for some. Now let's try the one where I did grind up the cocoa first. And this would probably be more similar to if you used cocoa powder. Mm. Yeah. The texture is definitely a lot smoother. I don't really get any of the graininess that I get in the other one. Um, but some of the other flavors are a little bit less pronounced. I don't taste as much of the pepper or the sugar. It's uh, a better chocolate flavor, so a little bit more similar to regular hot cocoa, but definitely very different and unique. Overall, these two are super good, and I'm going to go drink both of them now, so. So we made chocolate. This recipe was super great when I tried it down in Costa Rica and I've made it a couple times since. And I think grinding is the way to go to get the best flavor and texture. I'm sorry if some of the recipes I've done recently have seemed a bit easy, but I've been in the process of moving so I've been a little bit more preoccupied. However guys, I promise that I will pull out all the stops next week on my next recipe. So stay tuned for that one. With that being said, thank you for watching the video and if you liked it, please consider liking and sharing with your friends. And I will see you next week with another recipe. Bye!